Hey guys, today I have a super cool walk-in Wednesday for you. You have to check this out. If I were to look at this along with these, if this was a Jeopardy category, this would be things to hold your pants up with. That too is incorrect. And what did it cost you? Everything. That's right, I'm gonna talk about belt buckles, but to make it even more exciting, again, this is gonna blow you away. This is a pistol belt buckle. Now imagine for a minute I'm in the SS, and if you saw that one video where I had a twin, um, I, I guess it was my father actually who was a German soldier. If I were at the end of the war, uh, these were issued in 1944, um, and I'm being captured, what I'm gonna do is surrender, but then, you know what, I, I, excuse me for a minute, I have to adjust my pants. <laughs> That's right, four chamber, 22 caliber, and I can pull the trigger. Four shots, take out the guys that I'm surrendering to. Now, I'm immediately get, gonna get shot, but uh, it's my belief that these were like a suicide uh, last-ditch effort. You shoot the guy you're surrendering to, you're going to get killed, but it's what they call today death by cop. You go out with a brandishing a gun, and you're going to get shot. But a lot of the SS men at the end of the war, you probably know, they killed themselves. Uh, and so this was probably designed so that instead of killing yourself, you can take out a few guys and they'll kill you. Okay, I had to really suck in my gut on that one. So uh, it's a lot more comfortable if I take this off. This is the belt and the buckle. This is a uh, quite heavy and quite complicated uh, device. I'm gonna show you uh, that in a minute. We'll take a close up, but first I'll give you a little history on this. Uh, and then this belt, you can kind of see where the belt buckle um, matches the color. This is a, a brass and also on the inside it's like soldered. These are soldered. If you assume these to be real, these were actually handmade, individually handmade. I'm going to go over the history of these a little bit and then I'll show you the gun mechanism inside. So I want to start off by saying thank you to Ed. Ed is one of our subscribers, a regular viewer, and he happens to own this. Now he wrote to me and offered to send this to me so I could do a video, and of course I jumped at the opportunity. I have seen this, these before. Depending on who you read, some people say that there were only five made. Uh, some people say they're all post-war. Uh, some people say there's more like 12 of them made, and then there's different theories about why they were made. I already explained my particular theory, but let's talk about the origin of this invention. Uh, this was invented by a man named Louis Marquis. Now, that sounds French to me, and I looked, uh, I tried to figure out is he French or is he German, but all I know is that Louis Marquis uh, worked in a prisoner of war camp during World War I. Uh, and so somewhere around 1914, 1915, uh, he had time on his hands. He uh, developed the design for a belt buckle pistol. Now, it was different than this, but again, this was his early, uh, earliest design. But of course, it wouldn't have the Nazi eagle on it. Uh, but he did come up with the uh, general design. Um, and then he sought a patent in 1934. He got a patent in Germany in 1934, so that lends uh, credence to the fact that he was probably German. And it came to the attention of the SS in 1943. So he would had the patent out there for a while. Maybe he was talking it up to people. But in 1943, again, now we're starting to see toward the end of the war, maybe some people in Germany are realizing we're gonna lose the war. And so they came up with the idea for a last ditch pistol. Now, the only reason you would want to have a last ditch pistol is for surrender. I have my hands up, I'm, I'm uh, completely surrounded, or even better yet, there's only two guys uh, coming to capture me. I'm not gonna push this again because I don't wanna wear out the mechanisms. Uh, this doesn't belong to me, so I wanna be very uh, careful with it. I will show it to you in a minute, but um, as I'm surrendering, uh, assuming there's two guys, I have four shots and maybe I can get two of them, but keep in mind, this is a 22 caliber. Again, I'll show you that mechanism in a minute. So I don't know how effective it would be in taking out the enemy, but it certainly would be effective in wounding your enemy, maybe killing one of them, uh, but then you're going to be killed. Uh, and I mentioned in the introduction, uh, at the end of the war, I, I actually had the statistics at one point. I'm sure somebody can write it in the comments. 
but uh, there's a, ver a surprisingly large number of uh, Nazis, devoted Nazis, who killed themselves at the end of the war rather than surrendering. We usually think about that more in the Pacific theater, but it also happened in Nazi Germany. So this design came to the attention of the SS. Now, one of the articles I read, it says that Heinrich Himmler, actually, it came to his attention and he ordered uh, 12 of them for Nazi leaders that they could wear at the end uh, when they were surrendering. There is no record of anyone ever using one of these or wearing one of these. Again, it's, it's very heavy and I'll show you how well it's designed. It's a, it's a phenomenal mechanism, very, very cool. Uh, I'm just happy to have held one. I was aware of their presence. I have seen uh, others uh, that were up for sale. The last one I saw for sale though was in 2014. Actually, here's a picture of two of them. And you can see from this picture that these are different than this one. And I've studied a little bit. So for one, of, for one thing, uh, these two that are known and have been sold, uh, and the sale prices can be anywhere from 15000 to 30000 uh, These have been sold. They open from the bottom up. So this piece, uh, for me, it, it folds down. This latch folds down, and when you, when you pop open the mechanism, it folds down. The other ones fold up. You can see that the uh, color is different, the eagle is different, the size of the eagle is different. Um, and so there's a, a number of theories. Of course, some people say that these are all fake and they were made post-war. It's a little bit intricate for somebody to just make up. Um, however, I would believe that uh, they made these at the end of the war for the SS, uh, and then uh, maybe more recently somebody is copying them. Clearly this one is different than these other two that we see. However, uh, bear in mind that uh, when they ordered these, and again they theoretically ordered 12, uh, that Louise Marquis personally handmade each one of these. So it takes a, a very talented gunsmith to make one of these, and so all of them could be a little bit different. It's also possible that somebody else made some during the war or after the war. But the other two you'll see here, uh, they have SS runes and they are also uh, dated 1944. Uh, this one, uh, well, you know what? Let me come up a little bit closer and we'll take a look at some of the details. It looks great uh, up against my white gloves, doesn't it? Uh, of course, that's a Nazi eagle and this is a brass plate um, and that certainly looks aged. When you open it up, uh, these were never mass produced, by the way. They, uh, they were all handmade. You can kind of see that this weld spot, uh, very well made. So they put it through the rivet and they welded it and smoothed it out. Now the mechanism itself. So this, this folds down on this one. Uh, by the way, Ian McCullum, of course, he has a video on one of these, the one at Rock Island. He does a video. Uh, he goes through the controversy that some people say they're real, some people say they're not. I can't say because this is the only one I've ever seen. And uh, when I looked it up on the internet, there's very, very little information, very little even knowledge of this, which makes sense. These were secret weapons made in secret. If this was 007, uh, Q would have designed this without uh, the uh, Nazi insignia. Uh, or Maxwell Smart, uh, his crew would have put something together. I'm Maxwell Smart. So just because there's no record of these in existence doesn't mean that they weren't secretly made. Uh, and, and by the way, after 12 were made, it's, it is said that uh, the, the shop where he was working was bombed and completely destroyed. So after the first 12, no others were made. Uh, now this one, I've already mentioned the construction of the front and on the ones that Ian shows, uh, they are serial numbered on the bottom and each part is serial numbered. Um, the, the, these levers are ser uh, serial numbered, not every part, but all the major components are serial numbered uh, and on the back is serial numbered. This has no serial number, no marking at all. This is the uh, typical clasp that you will see for uh, period belt buckles. So there's no surprise there. That looks all correct. Um, now the mechanism itself. First, let's look at it from the side. This is a 22 caliber chamber. It is smooth bore, so it would not be accurate. It was meant to, you're right up, um, you know, face to face with your enemy when you shoot them. And a 22 in the stomach is not going to kill you immediately, but it's going to certainly startle you. Uh, so the 22 caliber bullet, 
And uh, if we were to load this, let's try that. I have these uh, 22 caliber sh uh, short rounds. Uh, I hope these are dummy rounds. Uh, I got them as dummy rounds, and I hope they are. Something you've never seen on uh, YouTube before is I'm actually going to load this thing. Uh, you can see all you do is pop it in. So once it's loaded, then you want to charge it by pushing these two um, buttons down and that pops it open very easily. Once it pops open, these are now cocked. Um, and to fire it, all you do is pull, pull, this is the trigger and this is the striker. And you'll see the striker hit. Okay, I'm, I have to tell you, I'm, I, <laughs> I shouldn't even joke like this on um, YouTube, but I think that was funny. Um, I did take the shells out. They were dummy rounds. There was hole drill, holes drilled in them. Uh, now, so that, that fired it, but in order to reset it, see this holds this lever. See that little lever there? That holds it in place. And to recharge it, well, let me fire each one of them. So there's one, two, three. For, please don't write nasty comments about I shouldn't encourage children to shoot loaded guns. I, I'm not in, <laughs> and don't point this at me. Um, to recharge it, all I have to do is pull this lever back, push this down. You can see how the striker moves back. And these, watch right down here, you'll see them reset. See that? Then the, the uh, firing mechanism is reset and you're ready to go again. So, you reload. In real life, don't reload. <laughs> you reload, pull this button, it pops open, and it fires four times. So that's how the mechanism works. I mentioned this is very sturdy, very heavy. It's a heavy belt buckle. In fact, if I walked around um, and got my 6,000 steps in, I'd probably lose more weight. It's just like a heavy weight on me. And now we recharge it, push this down, pop that out, and there you have the mechanism. Again, no markings at all on this. So one other thing I wanted to say about this particular gun, because it is different than those other ones, it does come with a certificate of authenticity. Now he has the original one. I just, um, he scanned the copy over to me again. It was Ed, thank you Ed uh, for trusting me to send this to me. Uh, this is one of the coolest guns uh, for a walk-in Wednesday. It, it was so cool to fool around with this and figure out how it works. Um, you know, I, I have my own opinions, but again, I do think uh, they were used as a last ditch weapon. There is only a few made, probably no more than five to 12. Um, probably people are replicating them today just because for that amount of money, it would be easy to do so. If you ever think about buying one, I certainly would get a certificate of authenticity. This was authenticated uh, by Timothy Davis, uh, and he, he uh, does certifications for people like the Smithsonian, um, Sotheby's and Christie's auction companies. Um, and it does say that he examined them and he checked with two other experts. Uh, what I thought was very cool, he was able to mark it uh, somehow with an invisible daub. I have no idea what that technology is, but I'm going to find out uh, because that's something we can offer with some of our party leader guns and things like that. I think that's a great idea, but obviously the uh, certification of authenticity is an important part of uh, this particular weapon. I mentioned before that the Germans like to take three words, like we call it a belt buckle pistol. Instead, they call it a Kappel Schluss Pistole. <laughs> so three words in one, and that's what, it, uh, that's what it's called in German. Now, real quickly, I just wanna say a few things about these brocade belt buckles, because as you know, I've been uh, collecting party leader PPKs for a very, very long time. And I've always heard about the brocade belt buckle. I've seen some sell and they go for a lot of money, but I've never actually owned one. Uh, so again, one of our uh, subscribers, somebody who watches us regularly, uh, Derek, offered to send me these. And thank you very much. Um, but uh, these I did buy. Uh, there are three of them and I'll show them to you up close and personal. This fir first one is the uh, party leader and probably the most desirable. You can see uh, on the broca brocade uh, belt that this would go with a, a dress uniform. Often you'll see them with the uh, shoulder strap and um, 
uh, again, dress, uh, dress uniform for the party leader. You can see how beautiful that is. That's a, uh, we do sell the leather belt uh, and buckle on the website. You can see here uh, that it marked 105, which I think is the size, and then it is RZM marked and numbered. Um, so that's the quality of the brocade party leader belt. Here is a brocade land police. Now, that's because of the green stripe and the style of the eagle. That almost looks like an SS eagle. Uh, but my, I'm told the land police would have been like customs and border patrol, um, much like we have a border patrol here in the United States to protect our borders. Uh, the Nazi Germany wanted to keep people out and then also keep people in. They didn't want anybody getting out who was going to spread uh, rumors about the Third Reich. There you see the inside. This is uh, near mint condition. I'm told it only has, uh, this, this size is 90, the other was 110. I'm told it only has a few moth holes on it, uh, but I don't really see them. I'd have to check them more carefully. This is the mechanism I mentioned before, how it attaches, uh, that was similar to the uh, belt buckle pistol. Finally, this one also in mint condition, um, a little bit of tarnish here. I wonder if that would come off with my magic cloth. I should try that. But this is a um, Hitler youth leader. Uh, again, dress uniform, dress uh, brocade, belt and buckle. Ah, this is the one that has, this is mint condition, but with some moth holes. You can see the moth holes on that. Otherwise, this thing is in mint condition. You can, again, you see how it attaches. Around it, you do see, oh, there's a couple. That uh, must be buckle. Um, and that's uh, the RZM marking uh, with the Hitler Youth insignia and the buckle with the same. So I have three of these brocade uh, belts with buckles, and I will be adding them to the website real soon. Hey, that was really cool. I really love the belt buckle and can't thank you guys enough for supporting and watching our channel and sending me some of these really cool things. And don't forget, today's category is things that hold your pants up.